Kelly is now 61, has been married twice, has yes. three daughters. It's taken quite a long time to get to this point. Yes, it has. Well, it's taken all of her life to get to this point. So. Because she always knew. Yeah, she's always down, known within herself that her brain and her body were mismatched. So how did you come into play? How, how have you started helping her? Uh, just over a year ago, Kelly arrived at our peer support group um, from a transgender support organisation, and she discovered us, and she came along to one of our meetings. And I know she gave you a call just before we came on air to yes, say she she's did, watching. Yes. So, hi Kelly, hope you don't mind <laughs> us discussing uh, all this on your behalf. Um, how does it work? How do you coach and, and counsel here? Well, we just offer a listening ear. We offer a confidential service. And we have several support services that we offer to transgender people and their families because the medical and psychological services in this country are excellent, but there's a real lack of social and emotional support services out there. And when you first met Kelly, you didn't know that she was previously frank? No, I had no idea at all. We take people at face value and we don't make judgments. Mm. We assure them of confidentiality and we work with what we're given. When you see pictures of Frank now, do you think, oh, I, I do remember who he was? Of course I can relate it now, but I didn't find out who Kelly actually was until her interview with the Sunday Mirror, which I was present at. Which I guess must have made <laughs> things even more difficult, another layer of difficulty for Kelly to have to deal with. It's hugely difficult having had such a public persona. Yeah. Most people like to do this in private, which is why Kelly chose to remove herself from public life in order that she could just continue down a road that she knew she had to follow. Uh, Delia, how much do you relate to, uh, to Kelly's experience here? Um, considerably. I've, I've gone through a very similar story. Uh, it is one of the biggest decisions you have to make in your life. Um, the difference for me, well, I wasn't public uh, as such beforehand, and I've gone public since mainly to help other people to be out there to work with sport specifically, to help other trans people go through sport and enjoy sport like I do now. And then that's the thing, isn't it? Because sport can be such a, a gender-specific area. I mean, that must be, again, like fame, like having a public persona, it must be another layer of difficulty. There is going to be the difficulty. I mean, how do you participate in sport? I mean, I like play a lot of badminton. I'm six foot one, and all the guys fight over flight fury for me to be on their team because I'm so <laughs> tall. Um, I mean, it's, it's fun, um, but I was also privileged to work for London 2012, and I met so many super tall women, you know, British women rowing team. They're, they're all my height. So actually, for that, tall women are really good in sport, and it's just a matter of getting that message across there. That, for people like myself, it's fine. I mean, we, we talk about men's boxing being a particularly macho world, which is the world Frank Maloney was involved in before uh, retiring from that. I've read another transsexual today saying, actually, transsexuals who haven't gone through that change yet, haven't sort of opened up to the rest of the world, perhaps over, overcompensate, if you like, in terms of being as macho as possible, for example. Uh, yeah, that, that happens a lot. You hear those stories. I mean, personally, for me, I was very similar. You, you name the dangerous sport, the occupation, I've tried it. But who was I kidding, myself or everybody around me? You know, it's, it's open for debate, but mm -hmm. you do eventually get to a point where you're happy, where I am right now. You know, people ask me, one out of ten, am I contented? My answer is 500. Really glad to hear it, Delia. Uh, final question to you, Heather. How, how long does this last, then, your relationship with, uh, with, to help Kelly, or is it just indefinite? Um, I would like to think it's indefinite now. Kelly has expressed um, a strong wish to work with TG Pals because she wants something positive to come out of her story. We've supported her and now she wants to give something back. So that's great for us as an organisation because she's passionate about transgender young people and wanting to make a difference, maybe working in schools and colleges and being able to use all of her former public persona as a force for something positive. Thank you both uh, very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.